Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another 10 Resurrection Sunday video. Since I'll be traveling over the next couple of weeks, I thought I'd simply give a Grave Digger update for 10 Resurrection fans. I've acquired a number of cadavers to put on this lab in the Resurrection Lab. Come up to the lab and see what's on the slab. Let's take a look at some of these death warmed over candidates right now. Just yesterday I returned from antiquing with four fountain pens, a funky pencil holder from the 1930s, and a funky dip pen from the 1900s. I'll show that unboxing in a moment. But here are a few pens I have in the Nosferatu laboratories that are scheduled for surgery when I get back from my two-week trip. During my flight, I'll be shooting some video experimenting with a few pens to see how they behave during takeoff and in flight. It could be a frightening flight, especially if I fill one of them with diamine ox blood. I'll be flying with my new Paniter TTT twin tank touchdown vacuum filler and probably one of my six pen BBS 456 vacuum fillers. But I'll only be taking three pens with me, so they'll all have to have some good ink capacity if they're going to last two weeks of journal writing. So let's take a look at what's on the slab at the moment. Here's a very interesting pen I purchased last year, uh, but have yet to restore. That's because the original steel nib on this pen was so badly corroded it collapsed into dust on me. It's a golden cracked ice style celluloid from the 1930s from a brand called Lagu. I have very little information on the pen, but it is a Parker dual fold clone. Yes, they had clones back in the 1930s. I didn't have a nib to go on it until recently when I destroyed another pen. This was a 1941 Parker Challenger that completely disintegrated on me. It looks like regular plastic, but it is indeed celluloid and you can see it's brittle as peanut brittle and it crumbled into pieces and the way you can tell it's celluloid is take a piece break me off a piece of that parker challenger and you take that piece and you put it on some aluminum foil and you light it on fire and keep it away from that one and you see what happens it lights up like magnesium so unfortunately the celluloid flame test uh, the pen does not survive that so dead patient but the challenger had a really nice 14 karat gold uh, nib on it and it fit the lagu perfectly so far i fit the Ch parker challenger 14 karat gold nib into the lagu feed and section and i've replaced the pressure bar and button and you can see that pressure bar working in there and the new button that I added to it the original pressure bar and button were rusty dust so all I need to do is resack this pen and polish it up and we'd be back in business again with that Parker Challenger nib and that nib looks like it's in pretty good shape next I have a 1947 Parker 51 vacuum attic in dove gray with a lusterloy cap, a 1952 Parker 21 in green with a gold cap, a Parker 17 Aerometric that was made in France in the 1960s, and then I have two ebonite fountain pens from the 20s. This one is a Parker DQ Raven from the mid 20s that I've removed the nib and feed. Here's the feed. It's one of the biggest feeds I've ever seen for a small nib very long on that Parker Raven and here is the nib and it looks like it's in really good shape as well and then there's this Conway Stewart Universal number 362 from the 1920s it's a lever filler with a small 14 karat gold Conway Stewart nib that looks like it's in pretty good shape as well. Both of these ebonite pens are deeply discolored. The Parker has gone green and the Conway Stewart has gone brown. I've got a bottle of this Penbury Manor 
black hard rubber pen potion number nine that I'm going to try on these pens but I'm not sure which one is going to be the guinea pig and then I have three Parker Vacuumatics I recently obtained this black one with the two cap rings is from 1944 and has a badly twisted nib this azure pearl from 1945 has a nib that's even worse look at that you could probably use that as a fish hook and this black pearl from 1944 has a fairly decent nib you can see right there it's in pretty good shape looks like a manifold style nib but it has an engraved signature on it le crow that i'm going to try to erase now let's look at the unboxing video i did yesterday when i returned from the antique store with a decent haul and i came away with a number of pens let's open this up and see what i got this is the first one that really grabbed my attention this is a waterman celluloid i haven't even looked at the imprint on it waterman's yeah, made in Canada, Waterman's. Very interesting celluloid, double band. So I think this might be a Dauntless, I'm not sure. And it has a medium rigid Waterman Ideal, 14 karat gold. That nib probably needs a little bit of work, but it looks in pretty good shape. So there's a another one for a Pen Resurrection Sunday. And here's another celluloid from the 1930s. This is a lever filler, and it's called prosperity i think they wanted prosperity back in the 1930s and this has a univer pen company i think made in canada that's 14 karat gold and ebonite feed and that needs a little bit of attention as well can't get the section off right now nice crunchy sack inside there but this really nice uh red pearlescent crushed ice style See, and the uh, the cap is different color than the body I think that's just aged celluloid so that's an interesting pen then I found another Parker 21 when I bought one of these Parker Vacs on eBay uh, the seller gifted me one of these Parker 21s and this is almost identical to it these uh, were more inexpensive than the Parker 51 and they are aerometric fillers and so now this is the second one I've got I haven't restored the first one so I'll give that a try this one says it's made in Canada there you go and this was interesting I didn't quite know what this was this looks like it's injection molded plastic the clip is all kind of bashed in and it's a lever filler and the, the cap has some burn marks on it so it might be an early plastic and the nib says velvet point six made in usa and that looks like an ebonite feed to me i'm not sure what kind of plastic that might be so it's going to be interesting to take this apart because it feels like that section is glued shut in fact i can see glue in there so we'll have to be very careful when we try to take this one apart and then there were two kind of kitschy things that i picked up glacier national park from the gift shop no doubt but it is a pencil it's got an eraser on this end and a brass point on the other end that you turn around and it has a pencil on it isn't that cool you get these little sh maybe i'll have to invest in some golf pencils to get this going but that's very interesting kind of vintage item and i'd guess that that's from the 30s 40s something like that probably the 40s and this was really interesting i saw this and i thought well maybe that's another pencil there's no markings on it at all it's really really old but you pull this end off and it is a dip pen look at that and you put this end which is split it's all brass and you slide that there and there you have sort of a travel dip pen so that'll be interesting to polish up clean up and see how that writes it's probably a hundred years old maybe maybe 120 years old 
this could be from the, the turn of the 18th to 19th century. Very, very interesting stuff. So more than enough to keep inquiring minds busy on Sundays. So that is the contents of my pen morgue. Pen Resurrection Sundays will continue on Sunday, July 30th. Keep your tips on the page. Thank you very much for tuning us in, and uh, on behalf of myself and uh, Aaron. Harold and the rest of the gang up here at the lodge. Uh, until next time around, <coughs> keep your stick on the ice. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote. I made this.